Hello and welcome to the 37th video in this series program with Chess Engine in C. Before we get started with the details of this video, I just want to go into the reset board function in board.c because somebody who's been watching the videos has very kindly pointed out that there's yet another mistake, number four, I think now on the list of mistakes. Inside reset board, I had this index loop here going to less than three. And I can only imagine it's because I assumed that I'd indexed the big pieces, major pieces, minor pieces, and material for white, black, and both. But I hadn't when I looked back in the definition in defs.h, it actually only indexed them for two spaces for white and black. So this should be a two here. The user also was kind enough to point out that I'd forgotten the material count. Although I think you'll remember in, a, in one of the last couple of videos, I realized that myself and added that in. But the pawns, however, are indexed for white, black, and both the bit boards. Therefore, I've put an extra loop in here, going from naught to less than three, so naught to two, and setting the bit boards to zero in this way. So, if you haven't downloaded the code from this video, the corrected version, and I actually corrected it for the download for video 36 as well, then please correct it. Okay, so the next small change I'm going to make is back in movegen.c. I had another look at the code in here and I should really have made all of these arrays constant because they're not going to be altered. So I've added the constant keyword in front of all of these arrays. And something else I did, so I did all six or seven, I think, move gen, move generation videos all one after the other. And I think my eyes were going a bit funny by the end, but I should also have made all of these functions. So all of the sort of small add move functions static in front of the, vo the void. Generate moves isn't static because generate all moves because that will be used as elsewhere but particularly when you've got performance intensive functions as these will be because they'll be being called millions of times every few seconds it's best if you don't need them anywhere else in the program to tell the compiler that they're only ever going to be used in this file and therefore when it's it, it will usually inline these functions as best it can and and create the code with this particular file basically as a in simple words as efficiently as possible so you do get quite a performance speed up if you make performance intensive functions small ones static in this way so I've added the static keyword before the void on all of the add move or add capture functions okay so on to this video there isn't going to be any more code in this video because the next stage and I've been programming it this morning is a big one and it's going to require quite a few videos and it's making the or creating the make a move function and the take back a move function and these are probably the two biggest functions aside maybe from the main alpha beta search function which comes later on the biggest functions that we're going to do in the engine and I've written out some little steps that we have to think about and I wanted to talk through them before we actually start getting around programming a function else it's not going to make much sense so basically what we have is we have a function called make and this takes in an integer move it'll also take obviously a pointer to our position but I didn't write that here the first thing we need to do in the function is we need to using our macros we did when we put the move structure together we need to get the from the two from square the two square if anything was captured and we need to then store all of our information of the current position situation in the history away that means we store the key for the position uh, we store the move being made and there were some various other things also if I go into defs.h I think in the undo structure that we're also storing yes so the castle permission the 50 move rule and the ampersand square we need to put all of these into our history array inside our board structure inside here so that when we undo a move we've got this information to restore and then we have to move the current piece on the pieces array from the from square to the two square so we make the from square empty and the two square the value of the moving piece but of course if we had a capture then we also have to make sure that we remove whatever was captured from the piece list so that's from the piece list structure here and also obviously reduce the piece number here then we have to update the 50 move rule and if a pawn was moved that gets reset and if a capture is made that gets reset we then have to look at 
if we actually promote it, which we that's where we use our flag that we have that we can end with our move to see if there was a promotion. And if there was, then obviously we have to remove the pawn that promoted, remove it from the piece list, and then add in a knight, rook, queen, or bishop of the correct colour into the piece list. And the same is with Ampassant captures, because that doesn't actually appear in the capture section, we then obviously need to move, remove the pawn that was captured and remove it from the piece list as well. And then if a pawn moved, if, if we end with our pawn start flag, and we find that a pawn moved for two squares, then we need to set our en passant square. And I've just reiterated here, for all pieces that move or get added or taken away, we need to write some functions which allow us to, increment, to update the piece lists. So to adjust the piece number, and also in this array here, is to either increase or decrease, so remove or add pieces into the array there. And we also need to make sure we incrementally, while this is going on, keep track of our big pieces, our major pieces, our minor pieces, and also obviously our material count. So that means we'll be making quite a bit of use of the is a piece big, major, is it minor, and what colour is the piece for all of the indexing for doing this. Throughout this, we also need to maintain the hash key or the position key. In fact, I'll type pos key here. Because Every time a piece changes state on the board, so it even moves or is added or taken away, we'll need to XOR the new key, uh, XOR either the piece out completely or the piece out on the square it was on and in on the square it has gone to. So we need to maintain its position key. And that also is for the castle permission for the en passant square and for the side to move. And here, crucially, don't forget the castle permission will be for every move that's made, we're basically performing a bitwise AND operation with an array where only the squares E8, G8, uh, sorry, E8, H8, A8, and E1, H1, and A1, so where the rooks and the kings sit, um, have values different than 15, so that if one of those moves it, moves, it adjusts automatically the castle permission of what castle permission we've got remaining. I'll explain that a bit more when we actually do it. And then obviously in the function we have to change the side when a move is made, we have to increment the apply, so the number of half moves made in the current search, and also the overall game history halves moved, half moves made from the start of the game, because this is H play here will be used to index, index our overall history array here. So as you've probably gathered from hearing this, the function is quite complicated. Um, I won't do, well, I'm hoping shortly to have the next video out because I've been writing this function and I'll make sure that I actually go as far as completing the make move, the undo move and finishing the perf testing to make sure that it's bug free before I actually start doing a video on how it's created. So that does mean it'll probably be a copy paste describe, copy paste describe rather than I type the code out with you but it's probably the best way of doing it because if I do it from scratch whilst doing the videos there will be 30 or 40 bugs in it probably because as you've gathered probably from going through this list here the, the chances of making mistakes are extremely high and that's why we have this thorough per perf testing. So that's it for this video. Just a description as I said of what the next steps are and for me there'll be a bit of a gap now before the next video comes out for you there won't be it'll just be sitting there in the playlist ready to watch. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube. And also thanks for the contributions that point out some of the small errors I'm making. Uh, that's really helpful and also very nice of you.